Alrighty, y'all, so this Thunder Mavericks game literally just ended, and I'm just kind of, like, shocked as to what's going on here. And I, I want to just point at coaching for the Dallas Mavericks staff for a second. Like, let's just talk about those, like, last, like, couple minutes or whatever. Like, situational awareness and things like that. It's just, it, it was a little bit abysmal to me uh, watching it as, like, a coach myself and just kind of being like, yo, what's, what's going on right now? Like, I first want to go to where the Mavericks were down, like, three or whatever, and the play they drew up to try and get, like, Kyrie Irving and or Luka the ball just didn't make, like, any sense. It took way too long to develop. Um, they had Kyrie running away from the ball, which I didn't understand. Then I'm like, you should have just had both guys running towards the ball in some capacity. That was weird. It's whatever. Luka misses the free throw. Come down on the other end. Uh, Chet makes both free throws. Awesome. They come back down. The, the Thunder don't intentionally foul. I'm not personally on team intentionally foul in that situation. I think it's kind of weird. They they go to the line. PJ Washington misses his first free throw. Um, for whatever reason, it's not communicated to him to miss the second free throw when there's only three seconds left and you have no timeouts. Like, what's what's going on there? You have a whole staff of people. Like, you that's just that's just something that needs to happen, and that's that's so. Uh, incredibly frustrating to me as j just like somebody that's watching basketball. But anyway, this game was wild. Like Dallas like had control of this game, like all until like it, what felt like like five minutes left. Like they just never were able to close the door. And I think that was a combination of like Kyrie Irving just wasn't hitting shots that he normally hits in game. And that's just, you know, it happens like guys miss sometimes. I'm not saying Kyrie Irving didn't give a great effort because he did. Uh, Luca, I thought, brought really good intensity and everything on the defensive end most of the game, but he didn't hit a lot of shots, too. Uh, coaching again. I don't understand why Daniel Gafford sometimes just doesn't get minutes. I know Derek Lively was having like a solid game or whatever, but Daniel Gafford is always the better option. He's always the better option between the two. Just keep playing Daniel Gafford. I just I just don't think it's that complicated. The way he's bodying Chet down there is just it's it's different. PJ Washington had another solid game. I thought Derek Jones Jr. was really, really good. So that's awesome. Uh, Josh Green, I'm still going to be a proponent of saying Josh Green should get more minutes. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. just didn't take as many shots this time. And Tim Hardaway Jr. had that one costly turnover. You just don't make that pass uh, off the inbound or whatever. I was just like, what is going on? But hey, let's let's shout out a couple of these OKC guys, man. They just kept fighting the whole game. Obviously, Shea was Shea. That's awesome. Uh, Josh Giddy, I know we're clowning him for like not being in during clutch time. And like there's points where he's not really scoring a whole bunch. Josh Giddy made a ton of really smart defensive plays, got a bunch of really smart rebounds and had a couple really nice like assists in this game that were just like, that's just his game, man. He's just such a glue guy, and I really like it. Uh, Chet really impressed me in this one. He was really fighting for those rebounds. You can tell he's like, I want to shut these people up about the rebounding. I give him a lot of credit for that. J-Dub struggled a little bit tonight. Um, I, I felt like he was forcing some shots and trying to be great a little bit. And, like, that's that's cool. He's young, like, um, and you want to you want to encourage those moments and everything, but they just weren't falling tonight. Lou Dort hit some very timely shots, and that was cool. Um, we're starting to see Aaron Wiggins cool off a little bit. I was getting real excited about him. Um, Isaiah Joe didn't hit any shots tonight but Cason Wallace man he is something especially on the defensive end like absolutely elite as a defensive player already uh it's it's so rare for rookie point guards to come into the NBA and find success it's very hard it's a very complicated thing to do you guys have probably heard it before but seeing him come in this year and just play his role and just do it well the whole season like just to come in and just be a solid role player right away as a lottery pick that's that's so awesome and obviously he's got a lot of guys to help him out and take pressure off him from doing a lot of things that a lot of point guards have to do but it's still incredibly impressive nonetheless if you're a Mavericks fan, though, y'all, I'd be pretty upset about this one. Like, that's just one that felt like it got away. Like, it's a combination of, like, Luka still doesn't look completely right on offense. He just looks like he's kind of missing a step a little bit. Uh, Kyrie just didn't hit his shots this time. And then just, like, coaching. Like, I just... I don't understand what they're doing out there a lot of the time, and I feel like some of the rotations are kind of weird, and I, I, I just don't know what to exactly point it to. I want to give a lot of credit to OKC as well. I just, if you had to ask me who I think would just like win in a game, I would say it has to be Dallas. I just think they match up better, or they just have a good matchup against OKC, but OKC just keeps playing, man. Those, those kids just keep playing, and I, I was fully prepared to come into this and be like, hey, like, how do these young kids respond with adversity, right? Like, that's a big question for them like it's easy for them to be all buddy buddy after uh, a win but what does it look like after a loss right and but man they're 
they're fighting, man. These these boys are fighting. So shout out to them. Let's let's move on to Boston, Cleveland, or whatever. This this was a more interesting game than I thought it was going to be. Obviously, we found out like kind of out of nowhere that Donovan Mitchell wasn't going to play in this game, and I was like, oh well, there goes that. And then Darius Garland didn't score in the first quarter, and I'm like, well, even though Max Struess is hitting like all these threes, and Okoro uh, even hit like a shot. It was like at the beginning of the game, and I was like, oh wow, is Okoro going to get going? Nope, he didn't. He went one for eight again. Um, Okoro just really really struggling. Um, like, like all these guys were like hitting like little threes here and there. Like Sam Merrill got the crowd hyped and everything. Sam Merrill still looks a little scared to be out there. But like every time it felt like Cleveland hit like all these momentum like shots that you looked at the scoreboard and you're like, oh, they're down seven points still. And that's just kind of how the whole game seemed to have gone. Credit to Jason Tatum again in this one. Um, I don't like that people are like hating on Jason Tatum a lot in the series. And obviously last game he kind of like was that was kind of the shut the shut the fuck up game, right? But I, I've just always felt that Jason Tatum is like a Paul George type. That's what I compare him to. And what do I mean by that? I mean that he's very much like I will fit whatever role the team needs at an all-star level. And that's what I do. Like, because Jason Tatum gets like double teamed a lot. He gets put in so many hedges and ice situations. And he always makes like the right pass. He fights for the boards. Like, he'll just, he'll do whatever the team needs for him to win. Like, Jalen Brown is out there to just go get buckets every night. He's like, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to try to score no matter if I can dribble or not. Like, that's that's what he's going to be. Um, shout out Derek White. Uh, still finding ways to contribute without hitting shots. Drew Holiday. This was, this was such a fun Drew Holiday game. Like, just the plays where he goes and gets like an offensive rebound and then goes immediately like into the post and goes and gets a bucket or whatever. He just does like all the little gritty plays like that, that I just love knowing that like that's that's my starting point guard doing that, right? Like as a coach, I'd just be so happy about that. Uh, shout out the bench though. Like the, the Celtics three off the bench that like you wouldn't look at these three Caucasian boys and think they gonna make a difference, but hey, when when the, when them boys got in, they, they did good things. Sam Hauser uh, shot one for two. That's awesome. He was he just brought his gravity out there. I thought he played just fine. Luke Cornett surprising me every every day. And now I'm like, well, he's just another guy that the Bulls weren't able to completely unlock. And I'm not saying that Luke Cornett's like the answer or anything for these guys, but he's kind of adopted into more of a traditional big man role, which wasn't really his thing before. So shout out Luke Cornett for that. And Peyton Pritchard, man, just having balls of steel out there, just taking tough shots, playing good defense, like fighting with every loose ball, like it's just, it's awesome to see. But no, like, Celtics really gave it to him. Um, there were moments where, like, I because I, I want to bring this up. Uh, Evan Mobley went 8 for 13, so he shot 61%. And I swear the five shots he missed were his easiest shots. Like, he had all these times where he had little-ass dudes like a Jalen Brown on him or something, and he just can't finish over him. And I feel like I've seen that so many times. Like, his touch around the rim just, like, isn't as good as it needs to be. I feel like uh, Karis LeVert needs to find a way to be like a shot creator from the perimeter i feel like he needs like more like setup moves into like step backs or something like that like i feel like that's more so his game he needs to stay jittery when he's out there which makes the shot technically more complicated but it's just a thing and um so where, when are we gonna get jared allen back like they i really like this whole day-to-day -day injury thing like i understand like i've had that injury before with like the bruised hips or hips of uh, bruised ribs or whatever yeah, it doesn't feel good or whatever. It's like, man, and especially if you get bumped, oh my God, especially as a big man. But man, we need to get Jared Allen back on the court, man, because like this is this is some of the best Cleveland basketball that we can probably get uh, given the roster that they have out there. It's like it wasn't like a scorching night for Boston. Like they played like just fine at the end of the day, but it wasn't scorching by any means. And like I thought the Cavs like pretty much maxed out the potential that they had with the roster they had tonight. And they just they couldn't get it done. It just wasn't going to happen because at the end of the day, they had Jason Tatum or something that they could go to to close things. And that's just how it was. So now Celtics have the opportunity to close this out on their home court. Um, I'd have to imagine that they're going to put them away here. That just feels like what's going to happen. I'd like to think they're just going to come out and dog walk them but there's been a couple times where the Celtics just haven't quite been able to do that this year and Cleveland's been fighting hard this whole uh season so we want to give them credit where credit is due but I I, I find it interesting and I I want to see uh the result of this game like already like with this next game I'm like is it does Cleveland just roll over does Boston just really give it to them because they can like what happens because I think that'll be telling going into the next series or whatever but yeah we got some more games to look forward to tomorrow back to Indiana New York Minnesota Denver those series are tight right now and man this whole second round is tight now uh, except for this one but hey you guys let me know what you think down in the comments below and we'll talk to you guys later bye